hide your Tinder profile. <laughs> they were all coming from Tinder. I had no clue. What's up guys, it's Sheridan here, back with another video. And I decided to make a part two of what I wish I knew when I was going to Egypt. Stay tuned. So I decided to make another video on this because honestly, there's just so much that you should know before traveling to Egypt. There's probably a lot of other videos that explain this way better. Um, but here are some more reasons on or some more things that I wish I knew before I had went to Egypt So this first one we obviously all know But did I listen? No, I sure didn't so I went to Egypt in the middle of August Everyone tells you not to do that because it's hot as hell. I mean it makes sense. You're literally in the middle of a desert like um, but I decided to do it because it would be cheaper for me. Airfare was cheaper. My tour group thing price was cheaper. So I was like, you know what? I'm from Texas. I can handle the heat. Yeah. Um, so it wasn't very bad at first. It wasn't very bad at first. And some areas are better than most, but it is hot, you guys. I'm not even gonna lie. From someone who was born in, or that's a lie, I was not born and raised in Texas, but for someone who grew up in Texas, who would be out doing sports in the middle of prime heat, used to triple digits, it is hot. I even brought like a neck fan with me to try and help. All I did was like blow hot air into my face didn't help very much so it is so important that you stay hydrated I you I would get like the giant bottles of water the biggest bottles that they offered and I would drink like three of those a day because you're gonna be sweating you're gonna be sweating out all the fluids and it's good that you're sweating because it's gonna help to cool you down but you have to stay hydrated because it is just so incredibly hot incredibly hot there were moments where I felt like I I didn't know if I was falling asleep or passing out like I couldn't tell the difference because I was just like whoa you know so just stay hydrated know that if you're going in August it will be extremely hot um, I wouldn't say it was unbearable to the point where I felt like my health was in danger but I, like I said, I was making sure that I was eating, eating good things, not like junk food, making sure that I was staying hydrated through the process and um, our tour guide, he knew, <laughs> he knew, thanks Sharif, um, he took care of us and so a lot of the buses were air conditioned, um, we weren't in the heats for like long periods of time. Try and stay in shaded areas as much as possible. Um, so yeah, just be mindful of that. It's hot. It's August. It's Africa. So as far as clothing, this was a question that I had as far as like being a woman and what was acceptable to dress like in Egypt. They are very lenient when it comes to tourists, as long as you are with other tourists. Like if you were in a big tourist area, they're gonna be very lenient for you. But I have seen like videos that have gone out of people in local areas who are tourists, who are wearing bikinis or bathing suits that would not be acceptable in their culture. You obviously want to be mindful of that. If you're in local areas, you are in their environment, you want to be mindful and respectful of their standards. So I've seen viral videos of people getting harassed and obviously not a good situation, but you also want to be respectful in their culture as well. So don't be wearing bikinis if you're in a local area. But if you're with other tourists, you're in a tour group, they're gonna take you to areas that, you know, it's gonna be more acceptable to wear shorts or bikinis and stuff like that. 
I never felt uncomfortable. I did make sure that, you know, like if I had shorts, they were like longer shorts. If I had a skirt on, I had a skirt that like went down to my shins. I made sure that like my shoulders were covered up for the most part unless I did feel comfortable having it off. Like we did like an overnight train and for the most part it was just my tour group. There were some local people and I did feel the judgment from them but like they were fine and I felt safe so I had like a bandeau on and like long like flowy pants. Those long flowy pants go a long way too because they're very breathable. You want to wear very breathable clothing. Like I said, it's hot. I went in August. We were sweating. So my favorite pants that I wore were these black flowy pants. If I got all sweaty and nasty, you couldn't see it, but there was enough air and ventilation to like go through and let things breathe down there, you know? So a lot of clothes like that. I went to the thrift store beforehand and I got a lot of like little cover-ups beforehand just to put over things. Um, I did a lot of just like sportswear, sport, like sports bras, leggings, you know, just like little breathable activewear things and just like nice little cover-ups that you can put over so you can feel comfortable, look a little bit more fashionable and you are still being mindful and respectful to the culture and a good thing too about if you go on a tour group is that your tour guide will let you know before the trip even started he was like okay these are the times where i need you to be covered up if we ever go in churches mosque you know women you want your you want a head wrap on you want your shoulders covered up you want your knees covered up um, so they will usually let you know beforehand the areas that you need to be a little bit more modest and need to cover up. Um, but for the most part, they know you're tourists. Like, if you wear shorts, like, you're going to be fine. If your shoulders are out, you're probably going to be fine, you know. Obviously, don't go looking like a... Y'all, this is a number one pro tip. And then this is something that I personally regret that I did not do. I don't regret much. I always take things as a life lesson, but this is something that I literally regret. When you are in Egypt, plan a couple of days to go to Jordan. Jordan is right there. You can easily just knock Petra off your list. Go to Jordan. I regret so badly not doing this. There were a lot of people on my tour group who, after the tour, they made the trek up to Jordan to see Petra, even if it was just for a couple of days and to be in the, the Dead Sea. I regret so much not doing this. If you are going to go all the way to Egypt and be on that side of the world, take a few extra days and go to Jordan and see Petra. Now, I will say Petra or Jordan is very expensive. I had no idea. Apparently, their dollar is worth like a dollar fifty in our dollar currency. Like it is crazy expensive to go to Jordan. But just do it. It just takes a couple of days just to see it, to experience something new. You're already right there. So go to Jordan. If that's something you're thinking about, or if you don't know, I had no idea. When I went to Egypt, I was just thinking, oh, I'm just going to go to Egypt. I regret not planning that or figure, doing more research or figuring out what other countries were surrounding it that I could have gone to as well. So go to Jordan. Another thing that I was not aware of, these are for people who have Tinder, y'all. So obviously Tinder has your location, they know what areas you're in, and they're going to show people your profile based on the areas that you're in. While I was in Egypt, I could not figure out where I was getting all these friend requests from, from these like Egyptian guys. I had no idea, like how are they finding my account? How, like they're looking at my stories, blah, blah, blah. Number one, make your account private if that's something that you just don't want to be bothered with. Number two, hide your Tinder profile. <laughs> 
They were all coming from Tinder. I had no clue. I was like, where are all these guys coming from? Then I remembered, oh my gosh, I have Tinder up. It's active. My profile is active as well. So of course my profile was being seen by people in Egypt. I was shook for a second. I was like, what's going on? How do y'all know where I am? Just a reminder, if you don't want that to happen, turn Tinder off or maybe you do want it to happen. I don't know. Just a little heads up. Another pro tip, and this one is a gem, you guys. Or not a gem, <laughs> it's gold. Uh, sorry, that was cheesy. Invest in gold while you're down there. I had no clue. Obviously, like it makes sense now. Like gold is such a precious metal in Egypt. Save up and invest in gold there. Like I'm obviously not going to tell you the prices of everything because I don't want y'all to roast me if I got ripped off. But I honestly feel like the deals that I got on them were really good compared to if I were to purchase something like this in America. Um, and these are just like fun souvenirs. Like I've always said that I wanted to invest and in diverse my portfolio and invest in metals and things like that. So when I went to Egypt and found out we were on a cruise boat for three days and we had a guy there who had like a gold shop there and you could just go whenever you want and purchase gold. So I was really excited to find out that he had a shop there. That was really fun. I just think these are like really amazing souvenirs that are just so unique to Egypt. Like you're not gonna like find something like this in America. And these are just like amazing things that you could just pass on to like your children or your grandchildren. And they'll just be like good like staple token pieces of the family, you know? And it's like a good investment. Like, like I said, I'm pretty sure that this is way cheaper buying it in Egypt than if I would purchase it here in America and it's only going to go up. The investment of this is only going to get stronger. So definitely invest in gold in my opinion. Save up to go and get you something nice. Like it's a trip of a lifetime. It when are you gonna go again? Like obviously I would definitely go again because Egypt is very special and it there's so much to see, um, but while you're there, just like enjoy it and you might as well just like treat yourself just a little bit, you know? <laughs> um, something else that I wish, I mean, it doesn't matter if I knew this or not, but something I just didn't know when I was going to Egypt is that Egypt is really based upon the Nile. Like the country is big, but most of the country, no one lives there. At all because it's in the middle of the Sahara Desert it's so hot no one can live there and most of civilization really does run along the Nile River so this little token piece I don't know what it's called but this represents the Nile River and they call it like the key of life so this represents the Sun and this is supposed to represent the Nile River so civilization is based upon the Nile because it brings a lot of nutrients, greenery, water sources, life for the people that live in Egypt. And you really do see that when you're traveling along the Nile. And most people are, if you go to Egypt, you have to do like a Nile cruise ride. That's what a lot of people do. You just see the lush greenery along the Nile River. There river 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 and then you see like the mountains in the back that is just desert dry dirt so life really does spring and come from the Nile river river and i just think it's so beautiful like this little token is all over the temples and the pyramids and the monuments and things like that and it's just crazy to see like that source such a historic iconic river it, it really is like the life source of the country pretty incredible anyway those are all the tips that i have and things that i wish i knew before going to egypt uh, make sure you check out my first video that i did to see all the other tips i have and make sure you check out all my vlogs that i did i have two vlogs that i did on my egypt trip and the tour that i went on if you guys have any questions like always leave it in the comment box and yeah 
We'll see you on the next video.